In our town right here, it's kind of sad. There's been a lot of shootings, a lot of people getting killed, and um, it looks nice, but it, it's a little rough. I grew up in Sanger. It was just, you know, drugs, alcohol, in trouble all the time, in and out of jail. And that's where I surrendered my life over to Christ. I gave up. I said, God, I, I know you didn't create me to live this kind of life. I just give my life over to you, do something with me. Ever since then, it's just been, there's no going back. It's all Jesus, man. Before we started the church, he's like, we're gonna plant a church. And I looked at him and I said, you are crazy. Like we were in such a tight financial position that I'm like, there's no way. I got connected with Southern Baptist and we were able to get funding coming in. So we planted a church. We're more of a laid back church, you know? It, how you look on the outside doesn't matter. Some of the people that come to our church, if they were to visit your church, you guys might be a little scared of them because they might look a little rough, a little tough. We try to get people that are on the street to come to church. We had that opportunity where we'd feed people. The food draws people in, and, and the food is our way of using it to share the gospel message because that is our number one goal. Seeing these men, these women, the, these children, to see the joy in their eyes when they realize and they recognize that they're not alone. It's just building those connections and, um, and letting people know that, you know, they're loved. What Pastor Jacob has offered us is a is another opportunity, you know, that, that the world was not gonna give us. Because all of us were wicked men at one point in our lives. But this man looked past all that. He just shows us love that the, that the world didn't show us. Because of the giving of Nan that we've been receiving, we're not left alone. It's a blessing and it helps us to just to keep going forward. Being the church to the community, to our neighbors that are right across the street, showing love to them, you know, that's just what it's all about. Good morning. Welcome to Grand Community Baptist Church. It's a pleasure to see all of you here on Palm Sunday. Lest there be any confusion, yes, we will continue to put the mask on as we're commingling around and all. Uh, the governor said it's not required, but it's recommended, and we certainly don't want to be carriers or contact carriers of anything either. So just we'll stay to this for a while, and we'll stay alert to what's going on. Many of us have had our vaccines. We feel somewhat safe, but um, we'll see how that works. And by the way, next Sunday is Easter, even though it doesn't say so in the bulletin. <laughs> And we will be having multiple services next Sunday. We'll start at 6 a.m. You're welcome to come dressed appropriately for outside worship. And we'll be over here under the uh, auto pavilion area. And then at 9 o'clock will be Bible study over in the ministry center. And then in here at 10 o'clock for our uh, other worship service next Sunday. So it's not in the bulletin, but we're going to have it anyway, even though it's not there. Other things are there. We've got some other things going on. I'll let Gary talk to you about that in just a bit. But I had to come up for birthdays. We have no anniversaries this week, but Kate Lahutnik would never forgive me if I hadn't come up here and tell everybody that on Tuesday she turns 25. <laughs> Her birthday is on Tuesday, March 30th. On Thursday, April 1st, we've got a no, I'm not going to call them April Fools. I'm just going to say we have two Thursday birthdays, Dana Fitzpatrick and Fred Newfield. And on next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, Emery Marsh and Charlene Voss have their birthdays. Ron Gale, come on up here. Or are you going to do it from down? Yeah, look at that. No boot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Healing is good. We saw a very interesting church in the video today, didn't we? We're still in our Annie Armstrong Easter offering emphasis. Um, uh, we, we have those kinds of churches here in Arizona. Uh, they're called Set Free Ministries, several of them are. And I think this church has partnered at times with Set Free. Uh, people who need a place that will accept them, irrespective of their past, irrespective of their tattoos, and no matter how bad they smell. And uh, the, these places are opening up their doors and leading people to Jesus through that. We've got a little more time. We've got a goal there for Annie Armstrong. It's there in your bulletin. You can see how close we are. Hopefully some of you are giving to that missions offering that helps that church that we saw the message of along with others. Ron, lead us in our prayer, please. 
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for the opportunity to be here this morning and bring our tithes and offerings to this storehouse. Father, we do thank you for the missionaries that we just visited on the tape. We, dear Lord, we pray for every missionary that leaves the comforts of home and then family and then go to faraway lands sometimes and learn a new culture and a language. Bless them, we pray, in their ministry. Father, bless us here at home that we minister to our neighborhood. We thank you, Father, for each tithe and each giver. Bless each one. Multiply it, if you would, and only you can do, that go to all these places to serve you. We worship you, and you're the reason we're here today. Thank you in Christ's name. Amen. I would like to welcome you to Grand Community Baptist Church. In the row ahead of you or somewhere near you, you might find a yellow slip of paper. This yellow slip is for our guests or visitors. If you'd like us to come by and visit, uh, visit you, we'd be glad to do that and talk with you more. And if you just fill your name and address and phone number, that uh, would be very helpful. And on the back of that yellow slip is a place for prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, we ask that you would uh, fill that out. And just drop it in the offering box or give it to me on the way out. We would greatly appreciate that. Again, I want to share with you some of the things that go on this week. On uh, Monday, we have the men's Bible study. Thursday, we have the ladies' Bible study. And then Thursday at 6 p.m., we have the Monday, Thursday, Lord's Supper. Friday at, at 10 a.m. is pray and go. And then, then at noon, we have a service, the seven last words from the cross. That's at noon. And again, reminds you about Sunday, Sunday, Easter Sunday, sunrise is at 6 a.m., and then our regular worship service at 10. I ask that you be in prayer for Richard Durlin. Uh, he went to the ER yesterday, and he's still in the hospital. And just be in prayer for Richard. Also, we had word Jaden Hine, her surgery was successful. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Fathers, we come before you, we want to thank you that you're an awesome God who loves us. You know who we are. You know where we are. You know the frustrations and struggles that we encounter day by day. And your word says that your grace is sufficient. Lord, we thank you for your love and mercy. Right now, we ask that you be with Richard and others who are in the hospital facing surgery or recovering from surgery, that they can sense your presence and ease the pain that they're experiencing. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer and leukemia, that you'd be with them in a very special way. Be with those who are still waiting for the results of the test and they're anxious and frustrated, but help them to just wait patiently. We also pray for the families that have been affected by the shootings in Atlanta and Boulder and other places that you would just calm their hurts and ease their pain as they go through the coming days and weeks. We pray for those who have heart problems, that you'd give them the strength that they need and give them the wisdom. And most of all, Lord, we pray for our nation. As we listen to the news, we see that our nation is going farther and farther away from you. And we as a nation need to repent and turn back to you. Help us lead the way. Help us to repent of our sins and turn back to you and Help our nation to repent. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Lord, we ask that you bless this service and help us to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. If you're willing and able, would you stand as we sing this? him to get to.
Before the choir uh, makes their presentation, uh, those of you who are friends of mine on Facebook know that I'm very proud of my family, and I put a lot of family things on there. So I'm very to happy to have my daughter and son-in-law here today. They're, they're the ones that didn't get the dress code uh, <laughs> uh, sitting up here, but uh, Bill and Chris Matthews, hope you get a chance to uh, visit with them after the service is over and welcome them. The choir is gonna present a story to you today. And every time I use the word story, I get a flashback, back to when I grew up. Uh, you know, I grew up in a pastor's home in the 40s and 50s. And there were a lot of things we weren't able to do or say. And, uh, one of the things we weren't able to say, we couldn't call somebody a liar or say that uh, they were telling a lie. We called it a story. Well, I'm here to tell you today, the story that the choir is going to present is not a lie. It's true, and it actually happened. So worship with us as the choir presents, is he worthy?
This is the story of a journey propelled by love. The love of a mighty God and the people he had created. It's the story of perfection that was destroyed, of mercy that was extended, and of God's faithfulness through it all. Despite humanity's rebellion and disobedience, God's plan to set things right kept unfolding. There were times the Almighty's voice thundered with judgment. Sometimes it was a song of comfort. For 400 years, he was simply silent. Then one night in the town of Bethlehem, everything changed. At 12, he stood in the temple and spoke of tending to his father's business. At 30, he was baptized as John proclaimed him the Lamb of God. Then for three years, he traveled throughout the land, healing the sick, delivering the broken, loving the outcast, and even raising the dead. At last, the road turned again to Jerusalem. As he rode into the city, crowds greeted him the way they would greet a conquering king. religious and political forces aligned to destroy him. One who had posed as a faithful follower betrayed him for the price of a slave. But first the Lord would eat the Passover meal with his friends. He had one more opportunity to show them his love and prepare them for the coming day. In Gethsemane, Jesus prayed alone. The first drops of blood that he would shed on our behalf trickled down his brow as he surrendered to his father's will. Soldiers arrived to arrest him, and a long night of trial and torture began. sentenced to death by crucifixion. He was stripped and scourged and mocked. And then he carried his own cross up the hill of Golgotha, where he opened his arms, submitted to the nails in his hands and feet, and laid down his life willingly in your place.
hillside that day, the message Jesus had come to deliver was unmistakable. God loved us so much, he would do whatever it took to save us. In letters of crimson, God wrote his love on a hillside so long, long ago. For you and for me, Jesus died and love's grace. Just when it looked like the story of Jesus would end in defeat, heaven revealed a new chapter called Victory. Sometime before the third day dawned, within the tomb, his heart began to beat. 
his lungs filled with air, Jesus rose to life again, just as he said he would. And the sorrow of the cross turned into joy. Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh. surrounded him in heaven, suddenly became the song that his followers took up on earth. He alone was holy. He alone could save us. When we needed a lamb to atone for our sins, he alone could do it. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you think that you would like to see it all brand new? Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? It is. is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. 
is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue he has made us a kingdom and priest to god to reign with the sun is he worthy is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory is he worthy is he worthy is he to all those questions. Is he really worthy? We believe he is. And we've got a whole Bible full of reasons why we believe that. So if you're not quite sure, let me have some input into your thought. Jesus himself says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That means he was there from the beginning of all creation. He continues to be there through the end of all creation. I'm the light of the world. There's no darkness in Jesus. I am the Messiah, the Christ, the one who has come to take your sin upon me. That's not me. That's him saying that. <laughs> is he worthy? Oh, yes. He is so worthy of that and much more of our, of our honor, our glory, our praise, our worship. He sacrificed everything. That's what this week reminds us of the sacrifice of Jesus. Now, today's Palm Sunday, and on that day, according to Scripture, as Passover begins for all the Hebrew people and thousands flock to the city of Jerusalem, he entered triumphantly as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Boy, did the week change in his life. 
until on Friday. After the mockery of trials and tribulations, he is hung on a cross. He dies. Not because he's done anything wrong. Not because the Father is ashamed of him. Not because he has any sin in his life. Just the opposite. He has lived a totally perfect life. The Father is proud that he has taken upon him his duty and responsibility. But at the same time, even the Father has to turn away from the sin that is there upon his shoulders. Not his own, but mine, yours. So as you ponder anew that question, is he worthy? And think of the many reasons that he is in your life. Perhaps before this whole program is over, you will reach out to him and say, Father, <laughs> you sent your son who is worthy of my worship. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill me with your presence that I will never be worthy, but that I will live for the worthy one. I will show others what the worthy one is all about in my life. I will be him through me as best I can as you give guidance and strength throughout all of my life, knowing that there will come a day when my eyes will close and my heart will stop and my breathing will end, but I will continue in the home that he has prepared for me. Is he worthy in your life? Worthy in your heart? If he's not, make it so as we continue to sing. Revelation 5 says, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise.
Jesus has been the answer to every need we have. We want to tell him again and again that he is more than we imagined he could be. And we want to tell the world they will never find anyone who is like our Lord. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus came up of every other name. Prove it. 
If he's worthy, prove it in your life. Reach out to him right now if you have not already ever in your life. Reach out to him again if it's been a while. If you've been all cumbered down in pandemic-itis and, and you haven't really thought a whole lot except, Lord, how come we're in this mess? He's going to take us out of it <laughs> one way or another. He is worthy. Is this the day you need to make a decision? Pastor Gary's going to be standing down here. We're going to stand and sing, He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Let's stand together. Pastor, you come. You come and share with Pastor Gary what's going on in your life. I serve a risen Savior. Don't you want to, again, appreciate the choir? Now, I'll let, you, I'll let you in on a little secret. They've been working over a year on this music. They started thinking they would sing it last Easter, and then everything changed. And so this has been over a year in the creation, and our director has hung in there the whole time. Let's give Russ a <laughs> And all these people hidden back there in the sound booth make these people up here sound better. Thank you. Thank you, media ministry. Now, Frank, I don't know if you want to include your wife's birthday in your closing prayer or not, but uh, you just uh, do whatever you feel is right. Uh, if you do it wrong, she'll make you pay for it later, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you all for being here again. We've got something Thursday night. Over in the ministry center, around the tables, we're going to do the Lord's Supper on Monday, Thursday night. On Friday at noon here, we're going to have seven different spokespersons with five minutes max each. <laughs> each one talk about one of the seven last words from the cross at noon, high noon. And then on Sunday, early risers, 6 a.m., get your own coffee. No coffee and donuts here this year. Then I'm going to run home and change clothes and come back, probably with a tie on for a change. <laughs> Just don't feel like being pastor without a tie on. So at 10 o'clock, we'll be in here. Before that, at 9 o'clock, be over in the ministry center for Bible study. And we will celebrate the resurrection together. Deacon Frank, share with us a closing prayer. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And oh, how we've rejoiced today. God compels us in Psalms to make a joyful noise. And our choir, our beautiful choir, works so hard. And we have been able to praise and worship God through them. Lord, we're just so thankful for everything that you've done in our lives. You've sent your son to us to save us actually to save us from ourselves, and we'll never be able to repay you fully for that. Lord, as we go out this week, we just ask you that, that you'll forgive us as you compel us to forgive others. And Lord, help us to spread the good news during this holy week. It's such a special time, and we want everyone to feel as blessed as we are. Again, Lord, Thank you so much for this time we've had to share together. Amen.